When we talk about America's founding fathers, one name that rarely comes to mind is Dr. Joseph Warren. A soldier, a patriot, and revolutionary idealist, Warren's words were so profound that 200 years later they would be repeated in Ronald Reagan's first inaugural address. Considered by many to be America's forgotten founder, Joseph Warren is the topic of this week's Real History. On the eve of our struggle for independence, a man who might have been one of the greatest among the founding fathers, Dr. Joseph Warren, said to his fellow Americans, our country is in danger, but not to be despaired of. On you depend the fortunes of America. You are to decide the important question upon which rests the happiness and the liberty of millions yet unborn. Act worthy of yourselves. It's no surprise that Ronald Reagan invoked the words of Joseph Warren. Dr. Warren was one of the chief tacticians, architects, and public speakers of the American Revolution. Joseph Warren was one of the Boston Sons of Liberty. His friends and associates, John Hancock, Samuel Adams, the future second president, John Adams, found themselves not only in the center of the storm of controversy in asserting American liberties against arbitrary English policies, but they also captured a larger vision of what constitutional government could be, should be. By 1774, at the outset of the American Revolution, he was president of the Massachusetts Provincial Congress. He was concerned that the Tory ministry in Great Britain was persisting in what the Americans saw as ignoring their constitutional liberties, radicalized Joseph Warren, formally aligned with the Patriots. By the summer of 1774, the British reacted to the Boston Tea Party. American patriots were hoping that the British Tory ministry would back down in its arbitrary taxation, but they did not. In fact, they closed the port of Boston. They unilaterally changed the government structure of the province of Massachusetts, and they changed the way judges were appointed and paid for. These together were called the Intolerable Acts. The Americans' reaction to that was to call a Continental Congress, something that had never happened. A convention was called in Suffolk County in September of 1774, and Joseph Warren set down to capture the challenges and the resolves to resist the British measures. This document, the Suffolk Resolves, is a classic document leading up to independence in America. In March 1775, Joseph Warren delivered a speech which rallied Americans to the possibility that fighting might begin. But it was especially challenging, even dangerous. People were standing out in the street. It was so crowded that he had to find a ladder to climb into the window to get to the podium. There were 50 British officers present, and the rumor was that they would assassinate the speaker if anything was said against the king. His message was that representational government and a social contract between government and governed was something that was the birthright of America. And in his view, had already been practiced and been refined since the earliest settlers. He saw that neutralized American liberties as being deeply offensive, not in line even with the British Constitution. Joseph Warren's speech not only riveted the audience, but also was reprinted widely and distributed for years and decades. News came from England that the British were apparently planning to put down the American resistance militarily. He 
he was a physician and his medical practice was open throughout all this time of political involvement. There's compelling evidence that Joseph Warren was spying on the British Army in Boston by way of his medical practice. Paul Revere, the friend and a subordinate of Joseph Warren, records very clearly that on the evening before the Revolutionary War, Warren urgently called him in to his medical practice, and Warren obtained intelligence that the British were about to go to Concord and seize military arms and supplies that the Patriots were stockpiling there. Joseph Warren urgently called Paul Revere and William Dawes and dispatched them into history on their famous midnight rides. Joseph Warren escaped the British guards and joined the Patriot militias during the fighting the next day. On June 17, 1775, Joseph Warren reported to the battlefield of Bunker Hill. Warren stood side by side with the soldiers there, repulsed two British attacks, and on the third attack, the Americans ran out of ammunition and were overwhelmed by the British in a bayonet charge. Sometime at that bloody climax of the Battle of Bunker Hill, Joseph Warren was killed. In the generations of early America, almost until the eve of the Civil War, Joseph Warren was considered a patriot martyr, someone who gave his all. Although Joseph Warren never traveled more than 70 miles outside of Boston, his name and his legacy was known and perpetuated all over the United States. I think Joseph Warren will have his day in that many Americans are revisiting the founding principles of the United States as enunciated in the time frame that they were formed and the challenges involved and personalities involved that made them a reality.